up? What's good, everybody? Your boy BQ and your boy TW in the place to be Impact Lounge YouTube channel and podcast network. And this is The Cool Factor, episode number three. Thanks for checking us out once again. Um, people have been seem- seeming to enjoy the format so far and enjoy the conversation that myself and TW got going on. So we're going to give you a little bit more of that this week. And uh, we think this show might be a little shorter than the others. We'll see. You know, I've said that in the past with podcasts and I go the normal time. Um, It's going to be short like run. (laughs) What'd you say? What'd you say? I said it's going to be short like the Clippers playoff run. Okay. So, you know, we we talked about the Clippers enough (laughs) offline that we don't got to, we don't got to bring it onto the show now. I almost wore a Clippers hat. I almost wore my Clippers hat. And I was like, let me not do that. (laughs) If it makes you feel better, I'm a Jets fan. So I know true misery. I know true misery. I know that the franchise franchise quarterback that, you know, we spent the third overall pick on, he's supposed to be this once in a generation <laughs> prospect and all of this. Oh, who he couldn't throw damn uh, you know, he couldn't throw damn, he couldn't hit he couldn't throw ice to uh, Eskimo on on Sunday. You know, that was ugly. But you know what? I say, if you're gonna play like that, damn it, let's go 0 16. Give me Trevor Lawrence. There you okay? go. That's that's the Browns might have something to say about that. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so transitioning to some professional wrestling right now. We're not gonna talk about bad sports <laughs> franchises all night. Uh so we're going to talk about this Bound for Glory main event for the most part. Um, the Bound for Glory build a little bit. There's a couple small things I want to point out. First of all, uh, for those of you listening, if you enjoyed this show, more power to you. I I was pretty bored watching this one. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not saying it was terrible. It was just it was just there for me. Do you get do you feel that at all? I mean, I don't. What was your take on it like as a whole i just thought it was just it was just Um, there so it gave me the feeling of um that like i remember you you know you did the show a a couple of weeks ago about about bound for glory card leaking and i feel like we're starting to see all those things come to fruition and my feeling is that they're going to a few detours to make sure that we slow play all of these stories. And so it's like, rather than, which I prefer, right? Because we've seen where two people bump into each other in the hallway and now it's a hardcore match, right? You know what right, I mean? right. Like, but so I, I see them kind of slow these stories and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with taking the time to see how stuff is going to play out and, you know, let's just see what they do to make, uh, make, make them breathe a little bit to give us, you know, bound for glory. Yeah, absolutely. In the past, they've done builds where, yeah, I, I think Moose and Rhino, I don't think it was bound for glory, but I think they might have been a slam anniversary match last year or something. They, they bumped in the hallway and that, that was the feud. So <laughs> right. um, it does look like it, it's <laughs> taken, taken shape. Uh, the couple of points I want to make it about the show, just in general, First of all, I'm going to give props to Tennille Dashwood every single week because y'all know that I, I love this influencer. No one's done an influencer gimmick. That's what I was saying she needed to do. And then she even took it a step further where she was she she gave uh, Jordan Grace a quote like people do on like on Instagram. Yeah, where yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I was wondering if you noticed that. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I thought that was so good. I was like, basically, she is – the annoying person, the person that annoys you on Instagram, right? Like, she's the, like, <laughs> that was so funny. She was like, a quote, and it's about jealousy. And I was like, yo, that is yes. so funny. Yes. That was so funny. And a little, a little sidebar, a little sidebar. Listen, for years, we've watched WWE TV where all the female characters are basically some version of a girl you either or you would never date, right? Like that's just that's the basic, uh, that's the basic like premise for all of the characters. Go, right? go back a little like, bit because so, uh, my internet connection is a little shoddy tonight. I'm sorry, guys. So if there's a little skipping around. I apologize. But you said they're either 
yeah, so what I was saying is that pretty much WWE frames its female characters, or at least it has for years, is these women are some version of a girl you like to date, would never want to date, right? Like, think about, like, the Nikki Bellas or, like, the Trish Stratus or, like, the Lita, right? You know, either this is, like, your dream girl, the cheerleader, or the bad girl who's going to have you robbing liquor stores, right? You know what I mean? Like, some, <laughs> some version of, like, basically, like, the, uh, the, 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 the archetype for how they build their female characters. This is... This character is like the, 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 the basis of it is a fun thing that, well, fun or not so fun, an annoying thing, but it's a real thing all see every day, right? Like we see everybody laughs when you see that person that poses, you know, they have their Instagram picture uh, where um, by, you know, so, you know, they found some good lighting you know, next to a river or something, and they take this good picture, and they try to put this deep quote next to it. Give me a freaking break. You, <laughs> you just want us to see your boobs. Like, come on. <laughs> like, right. You know, you know and, 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 and that, that's what Tanil Dashwood's character is. And I'm like, to me, that word, that's modern. That's good storytelling. Yeah, man. And uh, you said a couple of weeks ago that if you go, you, you said, go, get on, go on Tanil Dashwood's Twitter and Instagram right now. She ain't posted nothing about Impact Wrestling. When she made a return, she actually did post on Instagram, oddly enough. Um, and it has more oh. likes on it than anything that's not showing her boobs. As far as her other pictures go. <laughs> if, there's, if it's a bikini top and stuff, that's a different story. But yeah, I mean, it's right. got, you know, so uh, I feel like she's going to enjoy doing this. And we're going to see. I saw her on Twitter talking about Impact Wrestling, too. I was like, see, she's having fun because this is so close to home for her. Now she's nice you know you know so it's really yeah, cool you're, you're integrating her real life the, the thing she loves more than anything else taking pictures of herself yeah exactly uh and K i'm digging caleb with a k i love that uh the other quick thing i want to say before we kind of <laughs> get in, get into the main topic here is that you know i said before i was i was concerned how they were going to transition from wrestle house to to impact again and for me it's not a super smooth mm -hmm. transition like uh, you know, mm. we got the Deaners versus Triple XL, and you know the whole time Josh Matthews, yeah, they stole, they stole the beer, and you know, like I'm like, dude, why do I care about this <laughs> match, dude? It, it just Ooh. felt, it felt like a, a, yeah, it just didn't feel serious, you know. And Triple XL is usually a team that's really serious. Mm. I felt like Larry D was was locked mm. in, and AC Romero's that came down, I, I felt like he was a little jokey, just the way he kind of came off. I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, there's a storyline that has to do with. I mean, Taya was just a knockout champion, and now she's fighting. Uh, you know, uh, I saw uh, that Tasha and, and Kiara Hogan. She oh. lost to Kiara Hogan. It quick yeah. too. It wasn't and, a long and that's match. no dis to Kiara Hogan because I yeah, and that that felt weird to me. And that's not a dis to Kiara Hogan, but I feel I just feel like. They've wasted all the that they built up in Taya by having her be the longest reigning knockouts champion. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like... Um, now they're fighting over being a best Hogan man. In so. some... Right, yeah. right, 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 right. She didn't put over Kira Hogan in some great match where, you know, it's like, you know, where she really, like, brought out the great wrestler in her. And it was like, oh, you know what? Kira Hogan earned everybody's respect because she took Ty to the limit. Like, no, you match with some outside interference and you beat her with, like, a super kick. Like, you know, ah, I, I don't know. that. Oh, it was a neck breaker. It was a super kick and a neck breaker. Right, I right. was just like, I just, ah. Yeah, and what uh, are they really feuding over, the, you know, the yeah. whole best man thing? Um I don't know, man. It, yeah. it, it just seems like uh, they're struggling to integrate, for me, watching integrate some of them back onto the show. Um, after, which we, we liked Wrestle House. You know, well, was, one, one good but, thing. Mm -hmm. One good thing was like, so it's t the, the good thing about Taya, though, right? <clears throat> it mentioned that she was the Knockouts champion and a staple of this show for, you know, at least a year, maybe two years now, right? She's been consistently a show for a while. So she's kind of in that, that 
and I, I, I know I don't want to kill people with the WWE ref- references, but she's in like that Randy where Randy Orton does not have to be the the champion. He can get a main event anytime he wants, and he can put over. He has the credibility to put over a new guy anytime he wants, and then all it takes is you know, three weeks of him kicking people in the head to put him back in the main, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. even though Taya might be, you know, putting over Kiara Hogan right now, all it takes is, you know, wins the belt from Deanna Perrazzo, let Taya come out and beat her up, and she's right back on top. You know what I mean? She's right back in the main event picture because she's established. She has established instability. Um, I just feel like if people are going to beat her – It needs to feel like an accomplishment. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. She's taken a a few losses over the last several months that you're right. They're just, they're not accomplishments. They're not um, classic matches. You know, dude, this match had to have been like three minutes long. I I feel like I maybe four minutes. It wasn't long at all. Um, And you knew she was going to lose because she beat Tasha Steele's last week. You can get a lot done in three or four minutes if you just apply yourself aggressively. Fair enough, fair (laughs) enough, dude. (laughs) I know. Okay, I know where you're going with it now. Okay, okay. We're we're stepping out of the professional wrestling landscape here for a sec. I got you. (laughs) Uh, I was going to say something about Brian Myers. Yeah, so the bit. Oh, no, okay. continue. No, continue with what you're saying. Mm. Oh, you know, I was saying, like, so we, we, are, um, we are trending, right, with the, with the Bound for Glory card. I think that, you know, do you, I don't know if you still have the Glory card, the one that was leaked, but it looks like it's coming together just like you thought it was, right? Yeah, to me, it looks like it is. Uh, if, you, if you look at the main event from the show, it was, the, you know, the four teams. Um, I felt like even last episode, they teased it a little bit. They had the rascals standing in the ring, too. I knew very well they were out of the title picture, though. It seemed like they were going there with uh, – it seems like they're going that direction. It seems like they're going the direction of a multi-man match for the X Division Championship, like they said. We know the knockout – no, well, we assume the knockout's championship is going that direction. And, and then we got the main event. So we didn't think it was for the world championship at the time we knew about it, but, you know. Eric Young, Rich Swan, right, and I think that's a good main event. Uh, right, we finally got, we finally got the the main event. Like actually, you know, they put it down, like you know, on paper, like they, you know, they did the dramatic thing where Scott and uh, you know, uh, Rich Swan convinced him to put him in the main event with uh, with Eric Young. And I, listen, I have credit because. They have uh, – they, they, these are segments that, if done in front of a live audience, I don't know how it would be because, you know, a live audience can't sit there and they want to chant and do stuff and do that. But in these empty arenas, it's kind of forced you to listen, right? Let's dialogue is being exchanged, like what they're trying to do, what they're trying to get across. And the fact that Rich Swan is still in a walking boot and it feels like far away – so the idea that he's going to, you know, train hard and get his leg better just in time to Eric Young at Bound for Glory, like the story kind of writes itself. So I, I, there's an opportunity to make this feel like a big comeback story, almost underdog, can he do it type of feeling for this match. Isn't it funny that he had, you know, whatever broken bone, you know, uh, attacked several times with the crutch, um, had to retire, and he's still showing up, and he's still apparently going to be in the ring before Eddie Edwards is, who just got jumped after the match. Right. You know, they're acting like Eddie's going to be out for the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. When, in comparison, their Some the injuries people... are nowhere close. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> What even was, like, any specific injury? Like, I know he hit him with the hockey mask, but, like, what was the injury while he's home? I... Right. That's what I'm saying. So, for Did Bound for a Glory. Break? Right. So, instead of giving Eddie, which uh, I've, I've been saying a rematch for a main event at a pay-per-view is no one wants that. And Impact doesn't do that anyway. But right to think that Rich Swan's going to come back healthy 
before Eddie Edwards. I mean, that's basically what they're saying because there's, okay, well, you get the title shot, even though yeah. Eddie is – they, they right. pick and choose when people get their con- you know, contractual rematch. You know, mm. they, they really pick and choose. With right. That. So, <laughs> <laughs> man, think about this call your shot. The, the, go. No, the call your shot gauntlet. All, all it got oh, him yeah. was – Are they doing that again this year? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that's the, on that rumored card. So I think they will. I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling. But it's funny because it's like uh, – what the hell is I going to say? Oh, my God. What the hell are we talking about? Uh, the call, you, you were talking about – did, oh, did the I, call, call your shot trophy get anything for any- – like did he even really benefit from having? Them? No, he got a he got a triple he threat. He lost it to Michael Elgin. <laughs> right. He he, he, right. he he almost lost it. Instead of actually being able to call his shot, he had to pr- he had to earn his trophy again in a best of seven, right. just to get into a triple <laughs> threat match, just to get into a five way, and now not even get a rematch for his championship anytime <laughs> soon. You know, I'm like, dude, he didn't benefit from that at all. Man, Whew. dude. <laughs> let me let me ask this question real quick. Someone shot me this message. Did RVD do the talk show with Katie Forbes? Yes. Where? Yes. How did I miss that? And then they, then they did like uh, then they they had like all hand like interrupted and you know whatever. I don't know. Maybe you scrub through the show really quickly. I don't know, these things, you know, it's easy yeah. to it's easy it's easy to miss. I mean, yeah. you know, <clears throat> the thing is, like, these are such time filler segments. And it's tough because somebody like Sammy Callahan was on last year. And I think that's where a, a, a promotion like Impact Wrestling has an opportunity to really um, brand. You know, I was like, you know, where's our guys? Sammy Callahan had a chance to be one of our guys, right? Yeah. Because he was really carrying – the impact flag way last year. And, you know, he was the catalyst for getting Tessa Blanchard into it to look like a world championship caliber performer, right? Like he yeah. was the main catalyst for that. He was the only person. I don't care what anybody says. He was the only person to get a good stage as a world champion while he was, while he was in impact. Um, you know I mean? Like, like Sammy Callahan, you know, he really – he's one of those guys that should be one of the faces of Impact Wrestling. So, I don't think they should be taking him and stuffing him down the card. And that's no, that's no diss to Rob Van Dam, but, like, really featuring Sammy Callahan right now. You know what I mean? Like, he's just kind of throwing him on there. And I feel like, you know, Sammy's one of those guys that he is, you know, is an Impact guy. So, I feel like those are the guys you need to be featuring more prominently. Right, so we talked about EC3 that, that he doesn't feel like he's an impact guy right now. You know, they they got several guys, several people working without contracts. It's like they just don't. It's just right. I feel it feels sometimes where like we're just watching an independent show on television, and we're yeah. seeing how it it just doesn't totally. feel. I noticed that when they would do the flashbacks or you know the impact in '60s stuff, like it felt like TNA was really its own promotion everyone just belongs to the promotion mm-hmm. now it's like it's like impact is borrowing people i mean that that's how it feels well that's the thing right they were so excited probably two years ago when they announced this basically like open relay talent right <laughs> where like you know it's like you're gonna be on impact but you can definitely work anywhere else you want to and i'm like yo if you're gonna do that Watch Impact Wrestling. Like, what am I seeing on your show that I can't see somewhere else? You know what I mean? If I can see the Rascals versus, you know, um, versus the Young Bucks at PWG, why do I need to turn on Impact Wrestling to see the Rascals? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so I, 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 I understand that they don't see it as part of their business model to sign people to the type of contracts that's going to prevent them from working any indies. But to me, it really takes away from, uh, from re- a reason to watch the show in a yeah. lot of cases. You know, it's like, you know, the, the, the Lucha Brothers and LAX and all these guys, 
that were doing this great work in Impact Wrestling, but they were also able to go do indie shows that broadcast really anywhere else, you know, put up on YouTube or whatever. And I think that really hurt Impact's ability to, you know, like break as Impact guys. You said, uh, cause you cut it. And again, I apologize folks. My, my internet connection has been rough here at the house lately. You said to brand themselves as impact guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, you know, I think, um, you know, impact couldn't kind of, uh, impact couldn't like be like, Hey, the only place you can see LAX is here on impact. Right, you know? right, right. Cause that, you could see them. At, in the indie show they were working this weekend, like Kylie Ray is killing it right now. She's working like every indie, and her name, her stock has been crazy because I see her just doing everything right now. But my thing is like, yo, she's such a good talent. Why don't you guys get her under some sort of a deal? Like she's the type of 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 centerpiece that you build a division around. And again, you know, you booked in for what I would consider probably the second biggest match of Bound for Glory. She's probably penciled in for that, you know, right now. Uh, you know, I'm sure her and Diego put on a banger. But if I can see, you know, Kylie Ray at, you know, Warrior Wrestling this week and, you know, what, whatever, anywhere else, what is the exclusive? I don't need to watch Impact to see Kylie Ray if I love Kylie Ray, you know? And, like, I think that hurts Impact. Yeah, I almost went to that Warrior Wrestling show, oddly enough. Uh, I'm going to go to one at the end of the month. It's Madison Rain's last independent match. So I, I definitely oh. want to go to that. And then Moose and Kylie Ray will be there too. So And uh, the Rascals, Rhino. Nice. So Warrior, Warrior Wrestling is pretty cool. I, was, I went there nice. last year. Um, but, but look at that, though. You basically just like, let's like half the Impact Wrestle is going to be at this damn show. And, like, right. again, right? Like, get out of that. What is it? Like, to me, it just it makes the promotion look Bush League. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just it, – a lot of independent shows I go to have a, have a, a good number of impact people on them. So, uh, they – last year, Brian Cage was there, and Brian Cage was promoting Bow for Glory, like, at an indie show. It just mm. felt like uh, – should be the other way around. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I, I know what you're saying. I'm saying it felt weird, right? It's like it's like being a TV wrestler, the Holy Grail. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be like that's that's supposed to be like the goal is to be a wrestler on international TV, but you're you're still working in indie, trying to promote your pay per view the same way you out there trying to sell T-shirts. You right. Know? Yeah. Like, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <sighs> Um, yeah, but this so it you doesn't know, make impact feel like a big deal. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, with Tessa Blanchard, you have to believe she was on a salary deal, but then she was working so many indie dates in Mexico, and yeah, you just you know could see them anywhere. Um, so, uh, oh man, I was. I was going to say something real quick about Brian Myers and Willie Mack. Like, I hope this is done. Um, I don't want yes. them to get into this. But it's not because Willie Mack just got a win back. Right, right. So I, I was saying on Twitter the other day, this is like the gift that keeps on giving this match, a gift that nobody wants. Um, I was just saying nobody wants. I mean, it just <laughs> – once once you do it – It's the holiday fruitcake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and it just ends up being a paperweight, you know, like uh, – once it becomes three <laughs> weeks in a row, dude, it's kind of like, man, this is – someone had a nerve to tell me on Twitter, oh, like, like I don't know anything about wrestling. Well, you ever stop to think maybe they're telling a story? I'm like, there's no fucking story here, dude. This is <laughs> a filler-ass feud, you know, that's going to go nowhere. Yes. So, but at least, yeah. you know. Which is – Crazy. I think Brian Myers is, and I, I think I said this last week, but I think Brian Myers is like one of the people that is actually maximizing his time on Impact oh, Wrestling. Oh, yeah, 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 you see definitely. Him in a totally different light. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think he's really done a great job with what they're giving him. But I just think, you know, just like you said, like it's late. Have these guys 
just come out three weeks in a row doing the same thing over and over and over, back to back to back. Like, give us something different. Switch it up. Put them in a tag or, you know, something. Like, you know, make them – put them in some sort of, um like, forced partnership or something where you can, you know, do something like that. But, you know, same thing, back to back to back. Because cause where is it going, right? Like, right, where right. is it going? Like, why do I care about this third match in a row? Yeah, and they're not going to have a Willie match Matt at Balfour Glory. Back so. and why? Yeah. Right. Mean, means nothing. Or are yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> let's let's hope not. <laughs> we uh let, let's circle back around to the, the this main mm-hmm. event though. Um this is a few that they're actually telling a good story with. This is a good main event. Like this is a better main event than Eddie versus Eric Young, which people thought that's where it was going before Eddie lost the title. Um this this should be a really outstanding match and we're in this time of wrestling where people cheer heels and boo baby faces. Like this is a real, if you look at the knockouts title match in this match, this is like really good baby face heel dynamics. Um, and that's something I really, mm-hmm. really enjoy. You look at the other titles, exhibition tag team, those teams are really, really muddied up and they're going to be tr- car wreck type of matches. You know, um, this is a good main event though. It's the one match that I feel is getting a, a good build. Like, you could say, no, you can't say that the build with any of the other matches are. I will say the X Division build they're doing. Um, I don't like that they're giving away most of this match next week, but I like the Rohit. But, he's doing a different type of cowardly champion. I say cowardly, but there's there's times <laughs> where you know people don't want to defend the title and they're always coming you know, excuses i remember years ago edge and christian had this angle they didn't want to defend the championships and they had something creative every week yeah. to get out of the match um yeah, yeah, yeah. championship yeah. tied to other champions have tried to do that over the years but it's it's not creative and i like i like the way he is having them fight each other to where he was like telling TJP and uh, Chris Bay will take it, you know, take it up with each other. TJP wins. And then he tells right. Trey, we'll take it up with TJP. And then he wrestles TJP and he wins. Right. <laughs> you know, so he, it's mm-hmm. like he's trying to confuse impact management who should be the contender. You know, yeah. cl- clearly it's we're going to get a three way match honestly, for nothing, but because all, all of them are going to win I somehow. I think the best way they could go would be if. Rohit wins. If this all is, if this all leads to like an ultimate X or something like that, a bound for glory, and if Ro comes out as the champion after putting everybody through all this, because that is gonna build some heat on Rohit Raju. I think that like, you know, uh, a lot of them lose the, the X division title quickly, or they're gonna try to do some, you know, some build where all of a sudden he's like an unbeatable champion, which just stick, but. I think if you just keep this going, like have him keep weaseling his way out of matches, avoiding matches altogether, but then you put him feels like he's cornered and you still have him escape with the title, I think then you'll be on to something really good. Spe- which I, which I want to say I think is a, a – for for all of these matches leading into Bound for Glory, there's an opportunity here to tell some great stories that can – uh, enhanced by great matches by the time we get to Bound for Glory. And that works for me 100% because I, like, I'm not a flips and dives guy. I'm a why, do I care why this is happening guy. Like, that's me 100%. I think with, there's a theme we're seeing with a lot of these matches that could be happening at Bound for Glory, even this one, where – you got a chance. Like, we're, we're like out from Bound for Glory, right? That's uh, October 24th. Mm-hmm. This is... This Almost is, a yeah, month out. That's about four or five weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so they got a chance to, 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 you know, they don't have to give us the actual matches. Like, they got a chance to, to, by the time we get to Bound for Glory, we haven't seen any of these matches. And we want to get a resolution to these to these so i think they're on track to do that with really all of these matches yeah but with diana and kylie ray they already had a tag match this week 
And then neither of the two were part of the finish. And then all it did is will lead to Susie versus uh, Kimberly next month. So next week, I should say. So yeah, that, that just, that one's just going a weird direction for me, but um, I lost my train of thought. One of those nights. I, no, no, that's no, okay. It's okay. It's okay. I think I think I figured uh, off. But the um, I'm okay. I'm okay with the, the Sue Young thing because eventually they got to get her back to Sue Young, right? Like they've they've played out the Susie thing long enough, and I think like to create something to actually get back to Sue Young. Like, remember the end of that fun Diners Triple XL match in Wrestle House and Sue Young in the room and kills everybody? <laughs> and she comes out with, like, the bloody glove and Tommy yeah. Dreamer's like, oh, uh, I guess you won, right? And so, like, um, you know, the Susie thing was, like, it was, it was fun, you know, when we first saw it. And, like, you know, and I was honestly shocked and amazed to see what she looked like without that makeup on. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I think this is kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, it's time for something for, the, for the, the evolution of this, right? I think by getting her back to being so young now, um, yeah, like, I, I think we're all ready for that, right? Because there's nothing else really going on with that character. So I'm okay with that. And again, it just buys us more time on the the road to Deanna and Kylie Ray. Yeah, man. When this match kicked off, actually, Josh Matthews does this every week. How creepy is Susie? <laughs> she gives me chills. Like, we're not <laughs> six years old, dude. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I get no chills from that character. I think it's a great character, but um, yeah. So I don't know this this build overall. Like last year with Bound for Glory, the build was so uh, just. It just seems like every year there's there. It, it's a, a fraction of the effort compared to Slam Anniversaries, and um, there's a lot of matches right. in the Bound for Glory build that don't even have anything to do with Bound for Glory. You know, like we're getting the Brian Myers, Willie Mack mm-hmm. thing in the midst of this Bound for Glory build when they're probably just going to be in the Call Your Shot Gotland match that has proved to me nothing so far. True. So um, I'm trying to think what some of the other matches on the rumored card were. But it seems like – so. Th- well, there was the, the, the multi-team tag match, right? It looks like we're getting that, right? Like we're – we got basically a preview of that in the main of this show. Um, <laughs> there was the Ken Shamrock and Eddie, which, eh, who? Hopefully that one was wrong. <laughs> yeah. And um, knockouts, knockouts championship, right? Um, and then the main event, Rich Swad and and then uh, who I? Well, yeah, the, I, the X division match. Was there anything the, else on that card? Yeah, the X division. Mm-hmm. Or it looks like that's where it's clearly going. Yeah, and it looks like all that stuff is coming together. So let me ask you this: What, based on based on uh, everything we've seen so far, like, what do you think? What match? What story? Not match, but what story do you think has the most to be great between now and Bound for Glory? You said oh, the, we totally forgot about Moose versus EC3. But yeah, yeah. that wasn't on the, the rumored card though. It was and neither uh, was a, neither was Sammy they Callahan. Should, they shouldn't so blow that. no, I'm sure that'll be on there. And I'm sure right. we'll see Sammy versus R V D even though they're gonna wrestle at least twice up to the pay per view. So what, what so what is the Or pot- maybe maybe they'll put R V D in your shot battle royal gauntlet thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll win that, and then I'll be another great Mr. RVD. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, to answer you, though, I, I would say the main event has the potential, but the match that could have had the potential, I may answer it a little differently, the one that had the potential – and I don't, I don't feel it is, is Kylie and Deanna because mm. w- what I had said about that one is that the baby face heel dynamic is so good, but they're not building any real heat between the two of them. 
it's almost like we talked about the Clippers mm-hmm. before the before show was before the show mm-hmm. started and I said, Oh, they just relied on being having more talent than everybody else, but weren't right. in the right mindset, weren't you know and that's why I feel like they're relying on we, we already know this is gonna be a potential show stealer match. So instead of building some like mm-hmm. real heat between the two, they're just okay, let's do some tag matches, let's you know. You know what I mean? Like, so I thought the potential right. was and there, I, but it's not. I mean, I think they're, they're blowing an opportunity, blowing an opportunity because I think that's the ingredients for a classic match is you give me great story and you throw in a, you, you throw in a great match. Like that's right. how you get the ones that you remember. You know what I mean? Like I growing my favorite wrestling angle of time is Sting versus the NWO in 1997, right? That is my favorite wrestling angle of all time. And I know that they that all parties involved hate the match that came out with Sting versus Hogan at Starcade that year. I know they all hate it. Um, you know, I've heard a million stories about why, whatever. And, you know, I have my thoughts about how or why they should have done it right. But the story was so good. Oh. good right like you just feel the real tension between sean and brett leading up to that match and by the time they got there to that match it was just like it almost if you actually if you go back and watch that match it was crap like they brawled around the ring then they got in and did the screw finish and like it was whatever but it was still Hey guys, thanks for making it this far into the podcast. As you could probably hear from uh, the, the the skipping around a little bit, I was having some uh, internet connectivity issues, and I have been the last few days in my house. I don't know what's going on with that, uh, so I apologize. Uh, I did lose TQ, uh, TQ, the singer TW here, and um, my internet went totally out, and I was not able to get him back on and, and to wrap up the show. So thanks for checking out the Cool Factor as always. Hopefully uh, next week. I won't have that issue, and uh, we'll talk some more Impact Wrestling. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.